The community secretary, Sajid Javid, said at least 225,000 homes need to be built in the UK every year to cope with demand. He's told the local government association conference that every government is to blame for the current shortage of what he called decent, affordable housing. So how has the UK's housing situation spiralled so far out of control? Let's talk to Heather Kennedy from the campaign group, the Radical Housing Network. And Heather, I mean, it's a, it's a huge number of houses that we're now being told we need to build every single year in this country. How has it got this bad? Well, Sajid Javid is one of a majority of MPs who only last year voted against a law which would have required landlords in the private rented sector um, to make sure that homes were fit for human habitation. They voted against a law to make homes fit for human habitation. I mean, how, how can we in a civilised nation be setting the bar so low? I think it's also worth remembering that Sajid Javid, among a third of MPs, are actually landlords. Um, the reason they rejected that bill was that MP said it would place an undue burden on uh, on landlords. Now, we're getting this completely wrong. The, the rights of landlords have been put above the rights of tenants for far too long. Um, you know, we've had a housing, a housing system which has been absolutely broken by 30 years of privatisation and cost cutting being put above the safety and well-being of, of people. So what's the solution to that? I mean, you talk 30 years, I mean, you're talking since right to buy, I guess. Is, is, was that the tipping point from your perspective? Well, yeah, and it's interesting that Sajid Javid talks about um, house building. Um, I mean, governments before the Grenfell Tower disaster for a number of years have talked about house building, and we've seen house building, especially those of us who live in places like I do, like London. Oh, we've seen house building, but we haven't seen the, the right sort of homes being built for the right sort of people. Um, we've seen luxury apartments block go, blocks going up. What we need instead is we need the government to commit to a mass programme of public house building. Um, you know, council housing, it pays for itself. Um, and more importantly, it's the only way we're going to make sure every single person in this country has access to safe, secure, decent housing. Why, why has privatisation and the idea of, of, of private landlords, why has that made the situation worse necessarily? Well, it certainly doesn't help that, as I said, a third of MPs are themselves private landlords. Um, we used to have a private rented sector that until 1988 um, was quite well regulated. So we had um, we had a form of rent control. Um, we had uh, measures to, to make sure that people were secure in their homes and they, they couldn't be chucked out um, just because a landlord didn't like, you know, the fact that they might be standing up for their rights. Um, that was all that was all taken apart that was all deregulated um, and we now unfortunately have a situation where renters both private renters and um, social renters are made to live in homes that are just not safe and are substandard but there is, I mean there should be necessary checks going on in all of that I mean again that's a very big question that needs to be answered about the whole Grenfell issue and other tower blocks and buildings and things that are under investigation now but, but what's your assessment of why if there are houses that are really not fit and not safe for for habitation why are they not being checked and this being discovered well, if we're talking about the private rented sector, um, then, you know, the government have, in the wake of the Grenfell disaster... Any sector, uh, Heather, really? Any sector? Well, it depends on what sector we're talking about. If we're talking about the private rented sector, then the government have left it to the whim of landlords to decide whether or not they want to check homes and make them safe. That's not good enough. We need um, the government to be uh, requiring, demanding private landlords to make these checks so um, people in the private rented sector can feel safe in their homes. Um, when we're talking about the social sector, uh, then it's what we've seen in Grenfell, you know, and again, it's about privatisation. We've seen um, institutions, bodies, uh, who have responsibility to manage these properties and keep them safe, but are completely unaccountable to the public and to their residents and are woefully letting people down. There will be people tweeting in this afternoon who point out that we have seen huge population growth in this country. A lot of that coming from immigration, something which is you know, one of the reasons why the Brexit vote went through, of course. I mean, that, that is an area, it might be uncomfortable, but it has to be addressed, doesn't it? 
Well, what you see is that um, migrants coming into this country are often um, living in the worst accommodation, accommodation that, quite frankly, no human being should have to live in. Um, you know, there's overcrowding. It's the worst end of the private rented sector um, with conditions that are absolutely hair raising. So I think we need to be very mindful of that. Um, also, you know, we talk a lot about supply and demand and the housing shortage, but actually um, what we do know is that there are more bedrooms in this country than per person than there ever have been. Um, but what we have is we have uh, people with quite a lot of money um, who have second and third homes. We have people with quite a lot of money um, living in homes where they have a lot of bedrooms that are going unused. What we need is a proper redistribution of our housing. OK, Heather Kennedy, uh, appreciate your thoughts, your views on that. If you've got any thoughts at home, at Sky Stephen, uh, send them through. We'll read those with interest. But we've got the sport coming up for you in just a moment.